Welcome to ASP.NET Core MVC, working with multiple environments. In this video, we're going to look at the three predefined ASP.NET Core environment variables. We're going to set different settings for each environment. And finally, we'll set the environment and the project properties. And I'll show you how to set the environment variable with a PowerShell script. So first off, there are three predefined environments, development, staging, and production. Development is obviously the environment that you would be using while you're creating your website initially. Staging would be more like your QA area, your development's done, your unit tests pass, and now you're getting someone to verify everything is what the, spec, the requirements we're looking for. Then once we're happy with our QA of the website, then we could promote it to production. You're not limited to these three environment variables. For example, if you have multiple versions of the website available at one time, you could define an environment variable such as QA2. There's anything you feel would be uh, proper is more than willing, is okay. So how do you set up settings per environment? So you would add an app settings.environment name.json for the environment you want different settings for. When the settings class loads the values from the environment, it will take overwrite any from the app settings.json file settings from the specific environment. This is sort of like the web config transforms of the uh, ASP.NET days. So let's switch to Visual Studio and we'll look at an existing project that I have. So I created an app settings JSON file and I'm setting a web service URL to grab the weather from openweathermap.org. I'm going to tell it initially to use the zip code 11710 and the API key is set here. When I'm developing, I want to use a different zip code, tell it to use 32927, and I could specify a different API key if I wanted. So Basically, this is the code that we looked at earlier, where I have an eye weather service that has a task of weather response. It returns weather and displays it on our web page. I also have a my settings class that would be used for getting the settings out of the environment. So in my my settings, I have the web service URL, the zip code, and the API key. In my program.cs file. I got it set up to run under IIS and under my startup file I have it first off it's loading the app settings.json file and then it will load the app settings.environment and environment name JSON file and when it does that the configuration setup here where I'm telling it, hey, configure my services. I'll configure my settings to load from the configuration file. It will replace anything that's in the development or file, settings that are in the development file and from the app settings.json. I also did, like earlier, I have the weather service running, uh, being added as dependency injection. So, Let's go to the project properties and look at how the environment variable is set in the project. So if we open up properties here, you can see on the debug tab, there's an environment variables uh, section. So for this, for the initial run, I'm going to set it to development. Which is the all uppercase. And when I run it, we'll see that this will take the weather from Coco. All right. One thing I want to point out here is that I created this website when Visual Studio 2017 first came out. Since then, there's been an update, and there's a little bit of a bug. Since it was originally targeting ASP.NET.1.1, we just need to tell it we were looking at the first instance. So if I 
change it to in the uh, target framework to ASP.NET app 1.1.1, my website will compile and run. So if I run it again, we'll see that it runs this time. And when it goes, this one's using the uh, Kestrel server. We'll see that it took the weather from Coco and that it's currently raining out. I go back to my environment here. Staging. If I run it since there's not a, a different config file for staging, it's going to use the setting from the original ASP.NET uh, app settings.json file. And we'll see that it was going from getting the weather from Belmore, which is also raining. Okay, so you're deploying your website. Obviously, we're not going to set the environment variable in the project property. We're going to need to set it the uh, computer's environment variables. So we could use PowerShell for this. Uh, the command is pretty simple. As you can have it set up as a deploy script that you type dollar sign env colon asp.net core underscore environment. And in this case, I'm setting it for staging. So if I switch to PowerShell, we can see that we're setting the variable to staging. And if we just call b colon asp.net core underscore env, that we can see that the value is set to staging. If you want to learn more about ASP.NET Core, you can always go to the Microsoft Docs or the ASP.NET website. To summarize, we talked about the three predefined ASP.NET Core environments. We set settings for each environment in the project properties, and we also had to set it with PowerShell.